Sangaji, welcome to the first Keep Them Fly podcast episode. This podcast is kickstarting with a wonderful conversation with Dr. Harjinder Singh Lali, a Guru Sikh who has spent the last three decades of their life in academia alongside their inner calling for Gurmat Sangeet and their passion for research into our rich Sikh musical heritage. This episode coincides with the launch of the Sikh gramophone collection, which is literally the first recordings of Gurbani Keetan to ever be recorded back in 1903. Join us in this conversation of Dr. G's journey of yearning, passion and sacrifice. Please forgive us for any mistakes and drop a comment and a like to help us grow this podcast. Waheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Dr. G, thank you so much for joining us on this very first monumental um, Keetan Fai podcast uh, episode. Um, I'd love to start with um, kind of your background. How did you, uh, what was your upbringing like? Okay, so when I was uh, six years old, I started to learn Kirtan. I mean, by that time, I'd already been obviously going to the Gurdwara every day, I think, pretty much. Uh, it was Guru Nanak Gurdwara in Smethik, and we used to live maybe 15 minutes away. So we used to go there every day. And uh, as, as a child, I was quite uh, mesmerized by the Kirtan. But there were, at that time, there were really no, not many people who would teach Kirtan in the UK. Yeah. So this is the early 70s now. And uh, there just weren't many people who taught. So I learned my first shabds from a mom who, All right. who kind of worked out a few surah. And that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> Okay. And then at the age of, uh, well, within a year of that, uh, Professor Santok Singh, who sadly passed away uh, a couple of years ago, he kind of said, well, look, I can, I can teach him Kirtan. And uh, he was the Granti there at the Gurdwara. Anji, yeah. And so I started to learn from him. I spent around three years learning from S Professor Santok Singh. And what I did was uh, when I was learning, he would uh, ask me to very soon he asked me to start doing kirtan in the darbar right so uh we're talking like mid 70s now and um, how old were you at that time i was about seven years old by that time wow okay and uh so i was i was, I was his first student and uh so he would teach me a shab you know one morning and then about two three days later in the morning he'd asked me to do the shabd in the asadivar oh amazing okay, so we're yeah. talking very yeah. early in the morning we're talking like five o'clock in the morning for Andy, a seven-year-old yeah. to be going there so you must have been uh, obviously um stud you've obviously had studied gurmukhi then as well you must have been able to do bant uh, properly. yes and, so you know, i i had already started to learn gurmukhi my mm. mom had started to teach me and then again professors and talking started to teach me Gurmukhi as well. Anji. So it was Vajja yeah. plus Gurmukhi. Those were the two things that he blessed me with. Amazing. And uh, and I was the only kid doing Girtan. There were no other children. No other, I can't even remember, maybe five, six years older than me. Anji. You know, yeah, learning Girtan. It was just pretty much me. Mm. And I remember there was a, a Baba. I don't know how old he was, but... Um, he used to play double up with me. Okay, right? yeah. And he, he, he must have been in his 70s, right? So yeah. I'd do a shop, then he'd play double up yeah, with me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was pretty much the resident double up player. Okay. There's no one else. Yeah. So if you can imagine at that time at the Gurdwara, they'd, they'd have Ragi Jathas coming over very rarely. Mm. It was very rare that a Ragi Jatha came, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and the ones that came were absolute legends. People mm. like Bayev Dar Singh, you know. Anji. Um, it, I, if I may ask, so like, what's the reason for that, do you think? Like, why would there not many Ragi Jathas? Is it the cost of travel, that it, kind of thing? I think it was a combination, maybe cost of travel. Um, they just did, they, they, you know, now it's become a bit of a business. You know, mm. you, you do your tour and you yeah. make your money and you go back. That's pretty much, you know, what it, what it seems to be all about. At the time, they barely made any money over here because yeah. the community was settling. Mm. You know, we had all started, to, our families, our parents had just moved over recently. So oh, they weren't earning a lot of money. And when they, when the Raggis did Girtan, they didn't get, you know, a yeah. pile of money yeah. donated, right? It was very little return. Mm. So the, if, if a Raggi Jata came, it's generally because they genuinely you know, Dillon wanted to come Anji, yeah. 
yeah. and do kirtan. So there weren't many. So at Smedik High Street at the time, there was it was like every week there was a ragi jatha. Ahanji, yeah. In the evening, the kirtan was Professor Santok Singh and Gyani of Dar Singh. Achha ji, ahanji, yeah. And uh, there was a, the, the old gentleman I'm referring to was Ban Singh Mali. Okay. Who later on would turn out to be related to me, right? Many no decades later, right? Okay. But he's um, he was the old gentleman, old, old Singh playing the dabla, yeah. right? Yeah. And it wasn't classical tabla, it was literally just hitting the tabla <laughs> in some kind of rhythmical fashion, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that's kind of, that was pretty much my upbringing as far as Girtan was concerned until Anji. 1981 when Nanak Sar opened in on Waterloo Road. Anji. And then what happened was I... Uh, that's I, in Wolverhampton, right? No, that's here in Birmingham, oh, okay. Cape Hill. Right. Oh, okay. Right. And what happened then was that I, that was like, 10 minutes away from my house mm-hmm. and uh, I started to go there every day and I started to learn tabla that's where I st- in fact I learned all three at the same time so I was learning tabla mm-hmm. I was learning kirtan yeah and I was learning santhya right wow, okay so I was learning tabla from what well, my kirtan teacher was uh, ustad ranjit singh Anji. and he taught me tabla and he taught me uh, vajra and baba gajan singh was my santhya teacher wow, so okay, yeah I was pretty much go to school mm. and go straight to the Gurdwara yeah. and the Kirtan there starts like 5.30 and it goes on till 9 o'clock. It's a long mm, session yeah. and you're learning, you're doing Kirtan, you're sitting in Kirtan, you're kind of pretty much, uh, you know, you're, you're absolutely immersed Hanji. in Kirtan. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Uh, how, how often do you do that in, during the week then? Like after school? Every like, single day. Really? Every Monday sing- to Friday? Every single day for wow. around, I'd say, four or five years. Right. Wow. Not just the evening, yeah. but morning as well. So mm. uh, the Asadivar there started at 3.30. Anji. But I joined at 4.30. Sure. Yeah. So, I, and, and I was kind of pretty much between 4.30 and 6.30. I'd be in and out off this often on the stage yeah. and I'd be doing good then and that's the eight at the age of 10 wow and uh, that went on for quite a while that was I reckon I was about maybe 15 years old uh, before I moved on from from that and uh, so at the time I mean the kid I was re- learning was not classical Anji, yeah. the double was classical okay um, was that on Jory or just actual double like? Jory oh okay yeah, yeah. So, you know, with a lot of old ragis, uh, if you've ever heard by Balbir Singh's interview, Shromani Ragi, uh, he, he said that in the, in the old days, the ragis used to have to learn tabla first. All right, okay. And they'd spend a few years learning tabla before they even went on to the vajra and learned kirtan, mm. because they'd have to develop that rhythmic knowledge, that Anji, dal gyan, yeah. before they could move on to sense, shabd. I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so what happened here was I was... You know, I, I, lear- I, I learned them at the same time, oh, Jordi yeah. and um, Girtan. And to top it off, we learned Santhya as well. And the Santhya experience was quite remarkable because what used to happen was after nine o'clock, right? After the, after the Borg, evening. in the evening, yeah, okay, yeah. after the Borg, uh, after the, the, the kind of the Behengams, the, the, the Gyanis that stay there have mm-hmm. all had their... Roti Bani. Yeah. Reckon it's maybe 10 o'clock now. Mm-hmm. And what Baba Gajan Singh would ask us to do, there were two or three of us, right? And he'd ask us to sit, he'd lie down. It was kind of sleep time yeah. for him. <laughs> and it, it, it teach us Santhya. All right. Yeah. So we would turn by turn, we'd read the, um, the Bottinga. Mm. And I like, it, it's, I think he started us on the Bhavanakri. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then he moved on to Sid Ghost. And then, mm. uh, you, you know, we went through, through them. And he'd explain it as well as ask us to read it. And we'd, we'd carry on reading for about an hour, hour and a half. Anji. But there was a rule. And the rule was you couldn't go until he told you to go. Right. So if it, went on for a, yeah, if it went on for an hour and a half, yeah. you, 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 you sat there doing it for an hour and a half. Wow. And sometimes he'd fall asleep. Right? <laughs> so Try and sneak away at the same time. That's it? it. So we'd carry on reading. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, he'd be asleep. We'd know he's knocked out. So we'd kind of look at each other and someone would say, you know, someone yeah. shrunk their shoulders and get up and yeah. walk off. And he'd wake up, right? Oh, I know. And he'd tell us that I haven't told you to go yet. Oh, man. So, okay. yeah. I mean, you know, that's, it, it's called Kalana. Yeah. You know, it's called 
sacrifice, Anji right? Bilko, yeah. And that's how I had to learn. It wasn't mm. kind of, you know, weekly lessons, one hour Anji. at a civilized time. Mm. This was always uh, difficult times because yeah. it had to fit around my schooling, mm. right? And I think it would be fair to say that I, at that, during that time, I didn't pay a lot of attention to my schooling at all. Anji, yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that I came out with the grades that I did, mm. right? I mean, they weren't brilliant grades, really but to actually that. have passed, yeah. right? Yeah. was quite remarkable. Um, but um, I had to learn mornings straight mm. after school and then late till night. And yeah. I, I don't know how many years I went through with about five, six hours of sleep a night, wow. right? You know, which for a child isn't great. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. But I guess like what a blessed childhood, VG. Like, I mean, y you must know a lot of Barney content, I guess, like, I mean, between us, like, you know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. So I recognize Barney's pretty much straight away mm. you know it's once you've done that because it wasn't just doing the santia you were we used to do the rola as well Hanji, yeah, right yeah. so i'm a 10 year old 11 wow. 12 year old kid Hanji, yeah. doing rola on the guru grand Sahib, mm. right you know because if you know the guru if you know if you're doing santia then you're, Hanji, gonna, Bilko, yeah. you're going to do rola right yeah and uh sometimes um you know i'd I'd do a roll, come Anji. off, get changed, and literally walk straight to school. Wow, yeah. Right, and uh, didn't see much of my family at that time, but, you know, that that's pretty much how but I... you sound really independent for such a young child, though. Like, you must have obviously... I assume you went to the Gudra yourself at those times and made yeah. your own way back. I mean, my it? family my family all went. My my mom used to go. She used to do a lot of seva there. Anji, yeah. And the whole family used to go there. But there was just something in me that just said, this is what I like doing and this is what I prefer doing. This yeah. is what I want to do. And, and that's what I did do. Mm. And then what happened was uh, after, after that, after the age of 15, around about the age of 16, I met a son mm -hmm. um, who, um, his name is Santanar Singh. And he, uh, he, came to, he came to the UK, he's from the, again, from the Nanaksar Sampradha, mm -hmm. you know, from the Nanaksar family. Um, but I mean, there's an undercurrent to all of this, and the undercurrent is that all along, I, I've I've met another sant called Sant Miha Singh, mm -hmm. and same I've been, Samprada, sorry, same Samprada, oh, Nanaksar Samprada, mm -hmm. and uh, they 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 were based in Coventry, but when I met them, they had no base in the UK. They were traveling Actually, the UK. Yeah, and if 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 you were to ask who influenced you, you know, what was it that at the age of six, made you really want to learn Kirtan. It was listening to them doing Kirtan, Anji, right? Yeah. And their Jatha doing Kirtan. Mm. And Sant Miha Singh, he, he did Kirtan on the Jodi. Right. So okay. he literally, uh, he did his Kirtan yeah. on the Jodi. Wow. So vocals and then just like... That's it. With the, with the, the, the beat. Ah, that that's is correct. Yeah. So I've he, never seen that before. Yeah. That, that there's, you haven't seen it before and you're not going to see it again. <laughs> and, and I haven't yeah. seen it anywhere else. Yeah. So his story How is unique. that yeah. again, at around the age of six, seven, eight or something, he, he just got on a shank bag, yeah, na santanu, yeah. to do Kirtan. Mm. And uh, he... he the, is that like a Tarna style then? I Tarna you? style, yeah, 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 Tarna style, Class, mm. uh, the folk style. Yeah, and if we were yeah, to yeah. explain it to the modern generation, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be like a folk style of Kirtan. Yeah. And uh, that's how they did Kirtan. Mm. And, and that just inspired me to want to learn. Mm. So at the age of six, when I used to come home after listening to their divan, Anji. you know, like in mm. the old days, you used to sit on a fatta, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd just start hitting them and, you know, <laughs> yeah. play, the, play the table. <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. Just what every yeah. jewelry player does yeah, now. Standard, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that's when my mom kind of thought, look, I should try and somehow teach this kid something. Yeah. Right? That's the Tanda um, Mataji, you know, yeah. like, you know, they took the interest to, to get you educated into like that side of Sikhi, you know? That's it's it. Amazing. So, so now I'm going to Nanaksar up on our Waterloo Road, but throughout mm. all of this, I'm, I'm still also going to Nanaksar Coventry uh, right. and, and doing Babaji Sangat. Mm. So, 1988 to 87, I, I met Santanar Singh, and what happened here was quite strange in that they came to the UK, and with all the Nanaksar Sants, they normally bring an entourage with them. Hanji, yeah. You know, yeah. there's all the, we call them Behengams, yeah. right? Yeah. 
they're monks, mm. right? And the celibacy, celibate and monks, like, you know, yeah, dedicated and they, to the cause. That's yeah, right. Yeah. They live there, mm. and all the all the Nanak Sarsans have a ragi jatha with them. Hanji. Sant Nar Singh comes, and he's opened a gurdwara, and no ragis have. I'm sitting there, uh, and I'm doing this guy's sangat, and I'm mm. sitting there, thinking, look, no ragis have turned up, right? Ah, What's going yeah, on? Yeah. When are they going to arrive, yeah. right? Because you've opened a gurdwara now, and at some point, mm. the kirtan has to start. So it got to a point where I just asked them and I said, um, you know, when Baba Ji Raghya Ne Ka Dwa Naya, right? Yeah, yeah. And they just kind of put their hand on my shoulder and they said, Sade Raghi Tai oh, Right, you know, yeah. we've already got our Raghis mm. here. And then what he did was he just said, look, this is what I want you to do, right? And I want you to lead on all our kirtans. Wow. Jinne Sade Por Bahon Ke, you know, Masya and Barsi and all the main programs, you know, you're going to do kirtan. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so, and I thought, gosh, that's quite a big responsibility. Yeah. So, for 22 years, mm. I did Girtan there. And between what ages then? So That, that is between the age to... of 16, yeah. I reckon, till about 35. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, 36, 37. You obviously went to university in between this, but yes. I assume, where, where did you go to university then? It was in Birmingham. Uni oh, okay, it was uh, so. what was then Birmingham Polytechnic. Right, right, right. Um, now it's BCU. Yeah, and uh, so I did kirtan there, mm. and and what what happened there was that every Sunday, I had I did the jada mera nitnem siga right. Anji. It was my duty to do mm. asadivar, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to do the evening kirtan, and I didn't miss a single Sunday. Wow! Right. Yeah. Even for example, on my own wedding day, my Anji. sister's wed, both sisters' wedding days. Yeah. In the morning, Asadivar, you know, we did our Asadivar, oh, came yeah. home, got changed into our suits, went to the wedding. Yeah. Right. And I remember on my sister's wedding, as we were coming from the, uh, we left the Gordwara, mm. uh, where she got married at uh, Soho Road. Anji, yeah. Drove past the Gordwara, went in with our suits on. <laughs> Right. And, and uh and Babaji were there yeah. that day yeah. and they said Sutta Wala Jatagya, right? And and <laughs> we did a shabd. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Right. Very yeah. quick <laughs> like ten minute shabd, right? And yeah. they said Aj Mafia, right? You know, yeah. today you you can yeah, go. Yeah. Right. So we, we did a quick shabd. And then got back into the car and went to the hall. Right? Wow. <laughs> so we just felt, you know, that even on that day we had yeah. to um, you know, we had to do yeah. our duty. So what happens is, right? And what I mean by that is, uh, there's a lot of ragi jatas, a lot of kids learning today, who have never experienced that kind of commitment and that discipline, discipline, right, yeah. Yeah. and having to, you know, take it so seriously mm. that you you have to put everything else aside to do it. Yeah. And, and the other difference, I suppose, is that I've led my life as well. You know, I've Hanji. studied, I've yeah. um, I've worked, yeah. I've raised my kids. Mm. And on top of all that, I've stuck to having to do that. And yeah. then even after fulfilling that duty with them, uh, after they passed away, um, I still carry on every evening, you know, doing my Hanji. rehas and my yeah. kirtan. And um, so that that's how it all started. Now, then what happened was... Throughout all of that, right, um, I've been listening to people like Sant Sajan Singh. Anji. And in his kirtan, you can hear a dilarba in the back. Mm -hmm. It's very mesmeric, yeah. you know, it's just mesmerizing. Mm. It's really just, you know, just kind of touches your heart. Anji, yeah. Then I, um, someone gave me a tape of a sarangi. You know, right, okay. I had no idea who the Sarangi player was, mm. right? But they, you know, in those days as kids, you give each other tapes. Yeah, so I've got yeah. this tape, Here's you a know. Here's tape of a Sarangi. Yeah. That's it, yeah. And I got a tape of a Sarangi <laughs> yeah. and I, uh, you know, you had your tape to tape. Oh, yeah, which, the copies, yeah, yeah. I made a copy of it and yeah. I listened to it over and over and over and over again, right? Mm. I got, um, I was working when I was at university at the Travel Lodge. Yeah. I used to do a night shift. Right. And I remember I used to have that tape on repeat. Really? Right, it's just... So who, who was? Do you know who the artist was? Like? I found out later that it was Pandit Ram Narayan. Oh way, okay. So yeah. this is where it, you know it just got a bit, a bit, 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 bit kind of weird in that. Yeah. In 1997, mm. I 
ਕਨ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਸ਼ੌਂਕ ਤਾਂ ਸੀਗਾ ਹਨ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਤੰਤੀ ਸਾਜ ਬਟ ਵਾਟ ਹੈਪਨਡ ਇਨ 1997 ਵਾਸ ਦਟ ਦ ਨਾਮ ਤਾਰੀਸ ਕੇਮ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਡ ਅਸ ਦੀਵਾਰ ਐਟ ਦ ਸੰਤਨਾਰ ਸਿੰਘਸ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਅੱਛਾ ਜੀ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਯਾ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਅਰਾਊਂਡ ਗੋਸ਼ ਦੇ ਮਸਟ ਹੈ ਬੀਨ ਅਬਾਉਟ 15 ਆਫ ਥਮ ਆਫ ਗੋਟ ਇਟ ਫਿਲਮਡ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਅਬਾਉਟ 15 ਆਫ ਥਮ ਯਾ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਲਾਈਕ three jodiya wow yeah. now there's no budget you yeah, know it was yeah. all tanti saj there yeah. was a bansari it was just unbelievable when i was mm. sitting there with my you know my jaw had dropped and i just couldn't believe what i was hearing yeah so had you practiced rag kirtan before that then before I, you heard I had it, like, learned a bit of rag yeah but it was not very formal rag training right 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 right, right? yeah it was a lot of kirtan knowledge a lot of bani knowledge a lot of rhythmic knowledge mm. but mm-hmm. not real deep rag knowledge right mm. if you had asked me you know what what is the arohi of rohi of asavri or anything like that i wouldn't have a clue yeah i just have a bit of i know what kalyan is i know what pairo is i know right. some of the basic rags yeah so when i heard the naam tari stu kirtan i was abs- absolutely i just couldn't believe what i was hearing i'd never heard anything like it in my life mm. right So then what happened was when they came off I kind of you know I just found out more about them got their numbers and everything mm-hmm. and I I just said look I want to learn Hanji, right where yeah. do I learn from mm-hmm. and uh they gave me the number of my guruji which is uh Ustad Sarjeet Singh mm-hmm. in Southall yeah and uh so they said ring him is pretty much the only teacher in the UK mm. so I, re- I rang guruji and uh kind of I went to see them and but along all of that I I just felt There was a bit of me that felt very angry. Okay, why is that? And I was angry because why has the bunt not been exposed to this mm. kirtan? Yeah. How is it that 30 years of my life have passed by? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And this is the first time I'm hearing this kirtan. And yeah. Because as I spoke to them, mm. you know, they're saying this is the Pratan kirtan, this is how it was. Mm. you know the jory yeah. was this this goes back 3 4 5 100 years these oh, rag yeah. this shabds got this uh, instruments go back hundreds of years mm. this is the original kirtan and oh, yeah so i'm thinking what why on earth has the bant not mm. embraced this kirtan right yeah. you know so there was that that's what i've felt very angry about I felt very let down mm. right by the bant yeah. right yeah, yeah so but doesn't matter i mean i decided that that day sitting there i decided i'm going to learn this whatever it takes right mm. got guruji's number rang them the same day right and they gave me their address and utte jadda samagam siga at the gurdwara had to wait for the samagam to finish it was a one week program Hanji. and on the monday afterwards i just said to them look i'm on my way mm. went down to southall yeah and, and that was it then that phase of my journey begins wow. right okay. you know the tanti saj yeah. uh, phase now the the problem i suppose i have is that they live in south wall i live in yeah, birmingham it's 100 about, miles yeah. yeah and uh, at the same time almost exactly the same time i think it might have happened on the same day when my brother spoke to the jory players and you uh my brother wanted to learn a uh, classical tabla Right. You know. Okay. Yeah. So he found from them that there's a a a, a, a you know a teacher called Pandit Sharda Sahai. That's right. Right. And he lives in Ealing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I went to see Guruji. Yeah. And the following week my brother came with me and he went to Ealing. Right. I went to Southall. Yeah. Yeah. And we just kind of got there and I dropped him off. Yeah. Went to Guruji had my lesson he had his lesson and then kind of met back and came home. Yeah. And you know this was a kind of a all day event because we'd kind of leave at about 8 in the morning, yeah. right? Maybe half 8 and uh, we'd get there about 10 half 10. Hanji, yeah. We'd have our lessons. After the lesson, uh the, see the other thing with Guruji was they they don't clock watch. So it wasn't right. like you've had your one hour lesson. Hanji, yeah. off you go wow, it was sometimes okay. it ended up being 2 hours right right you down on the march sigi hana we we just carry on you know wow. for however long yeah and uh, so it's now 2 hours so it's now like 12 1 o'clock yeah. right so what we'd be doing is we'd be hungry so then we'd go to shansha oh yeah standard eat, yeah right <laughs> and it's now 2 o'clock and we come back yeah. look it's 4 o'clock by the time we've got back yeah so this is every sat every single saturday wow 
right? Yeah. We did this. I don't know how many years we did this, yeah. right? And uh, and that's what we had to do to learn, mm. right? I got married, and um, even after I got married, I cut it down a bit. It's like every two weeks, right? Sure. Yeah. But still, I'd, yeah, I'd still, go. Yeah, had kids, yeah. and still, I'd go. Wow. That's right. So difficult. this is yeah. the th this is what kind of um, it kind of puts, puts a bit of a, sm a s smile on my face is that. Mm. We get people wanting to learn from us now, Hanji. right? Yeah. And uh, where are your classes there in Birmingham? Where do you Hanji. live? Oh, we live in Wolverhampton. That's a bit far, that is. <laughs> is there not anyone local? And I'm thinking, yeah. well, I had to travel 100 miles yeah, every week, yeah, yeah. 100 miles there, 100 miles back to yeah. learn, right? And you can't travel, mm. you know, eight miles Absolutely. down the road yeah, to yeah. learn. So, but, you know, that, 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 that's, that's how it is. So mm. now that next phase of my journey has started. Right. Right. Yeah. I am learning Danti Saj from Guruji. What did you start with? Sarangi. Sarangi. And that's what I've learned and all the way And that's because you were listening to uh, Ram, exactly. Ram, uh, Ram Narayanji's uh, recordings, right? That's it. That was the inspiration. So this is how I discovered it was Pandit Ram Narayan because when I went to Guruji and I, I yeah. just said to them that I've been listening to this recording, mm. right? And, uh, and I played it and they said, that's my guru. Oh, okay, no way. Wow. I was just, I was just f floored. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. could not believe. It's like the that universe just lines up for you. That's you know, it. All lined up yeah. for me. This wow. did right, and um, and I met Bandaji Guruji Bandar Ramran many times. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to Mumbai, I go to meet yeah. him. It's like a homage, you know. It's like wow. a pilgrimage. Sure. That I I I I pay because mm. he is the father of our school, right? Mm. Because he taught Guruji and Guruji taught me and yeah, I brought yeah, all the students that are learning. Yeah. And we are very traditional in that sense, in the Karana sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we are a Karana. And what is a Karana? A karana is a family of musicians. Right, okay. Right. And we are a family of musicians. Mm -hmm. This is our lineage. Yeah. Right. And he is the father of our Karana. So right? what's the Karana's name then? There's no name. There's no, okay. Right. You can call it GSA or whatever you want, <laughs> yeah, right? Sure. But okay. we don't really have a name, but um, yeah. he's the father of the Karana. And uh, so once I started to learn from Guruji, I mm -hmm. also met Ustad Srinder Singh Sound, right. who lives in Sutton Coldfield. Mm -hmm. And I learned rag vocal and theory from him. Okay, not from a star. The no, original. I learned it from Guruji as well. Right, right, right. They right. taught me the rag theory, but the mm. vocals. Interesting. I went to a star, Srinder Singh. Mm. Right. And where why the, did you seek I, their? Counsel yeah, I felt I needed to focus just on vocal. Right. Right, and because I'd never actually done that. Mm. So, uh, so we've now got they're the, they're the two gurus that I kind mm. of um, attribute, you know, much of my rag knowledge to. Hanji, yeah. 1997, when I start learning from Guruji, I also start teaching three students. Right, okay. And um, three becomes five. Yeah. Five becomes 12. And, you know, now I don't know how many we've got. Must be yeah. more than 100, right? Who are this learning. is in Birmingham, right? This at, is in At Nanaksar? At Nanaksar Waterloo Road. Right, yeah. Then we moved to Bob Bicke. Then we moved to King Edward's Gill School. Okay, yeah. And uh, we've been at King Edward's Gill School all along. And then we launched a class in Nanaksar Coventry. Right, okay. Uh, which is, it's a very, very big, in fact, there's four classes there now. Right, okay. At Nanaksar Coventry. On the weekends? At weekends at 7.15 in the morning on a Sunday. Oh, wow, okay. Right, our yeah. class has always been at 7.15 in the morning. Right. 25 years, maybe, 26 years. What's the reason for the early start? The is reason that, that for discipline? the early start is uh, we used to do Asadiwar. Right. Straight after the Asadiwar, we'd have the lesson. Makes sense, yeah. And that's it, stuck, yeah. right? <laughs> and, you know, students kind of find it very convenient because they it doesn't interfere with any of their weddings and the kind of yeah, arts yeah. and functions, right? Yeah, yeah. They can have their lesson. They've got the whole day ahead of them. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I started to teach uh, myself, and that just developed and grew and grew and grew. And I can't remember when it was where we said we need to, you know, we're going to call form the GSA, the Guru Musangit Academy. Okay, yeah. And, um, and and that's it. The rest is history, really. We've got hundreds of students who've learned, mm. literally hundreds who've gone through the academy and learned. Anji. Um, we've got double R classes and mm. we've got Danti Saj classes. We don't teach Vajra. Okay, yeah. We only, see, we only teach Danti Saj Kirtan. Mm-hmm. And we teach Kirtan, what we call Nirdarat Rag. So uh, all the Shabds are according to the Rag in the Bani. Okay, yeah. 
those are our basic rules mm-hmm. right yeah and uh, so that that's pretty much my story wow that's uh, that's honestly truly amazing just like i i i know had no idea and we've met many times but i really i didn't realize you'd had such a, an amazing upbringing and and uh, deep rooted um you know history in in the sampradama and also just in in your your kind of riyas of like practice and dedication to learning and just seeking out those teachers it's just uh, truly amazing so like gsa then um like how so do you teach like sarangi uh, dilraba what what instruments do you actually teach there yeah we teach sarangi dilraba taus israj and uh, rabab sorry okay and jodi tabla and jodi okay. yeah so we don't teach sitar yeah we don't teach bansuri mm-hmm. right there are instruments we don't teach we yeah. can't claim to teach them we don't have the tutors to teach them sure. yeah. we've now got around 6 7 tutors mm mm-hmm. And uh we're going to launch a teacher training course. Okay, to train more teachers. Right. right. Within the GSA or for like uh, anywhere. Oh, right. Anyone okay. can join. Mm-hmm. If someone wants to start a class in London, yeah. They can join our teacher training course and uh get all the basics and, and know how to deliver the training. Right. Okay. I mean the other thing I I should say that y- you know once I became exposed to this kirtan. Yeah. the the traditional style of sikh kirtan anji there was something else we started to do and this was in 1997 as well 1997 a lot of things happened right i met guruji we started gsa yeah and then what we also started to do was we started to do the sikh society circuit okay and what right. i mean by that is that we would attend the sikh society kirtans anji yeah and you know sikh sites up and down the country would call us down yeah. do kirtan and yeah. we do it on these instruments and you know students would sit there you know i'd like to think it was a similar experience to i had yeah when i heard the naam tarees but i'm nowhere near as good as them but you know i hope that they yeah. sat you know that they felt absolutely like wow what is this Anji, right yeah. you know why haven't we heard that's this quite before? novel to be honest with you because like I, i i'll be honest with you my experience of actually when i first heard about you know like dr harjinder singh lali and then and i see danti sages like back when videos were like you know 240p or whatever like resolution they were on like bricks of a phone but like um my brother actually uh, he's a cambridge grad and um obviously he he's six years older than me so like i was still relatively young he's always been kind of more of a father figure to me and like when he he had some cds that were distributed as part of the, the sikh society um you know annual events and things and i came across your keys then and I, uh, as in um the group and i was like this isn't this is incredible like i'd never heard anything like it so that impression certainly lasted with me and i'm sure you probably have had that impression i mean yeah uh, there's there's probably countless people you've probably touched in that, yeah, in that, that sense yeah that those cds that your brother got were when i went to in 1999 to cambridge university Right okay yeah and uh, you literally he, remember it like. yeah I remember it and uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a pack of 3 CDs oh right okay and the 3Ds just had MP3s on yeah, them yeah that's it yeah, right? yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, so we were we did we used to do keep them everywhere we yeah. used to do katha in english and we produced a whole bunch of MP3s which yeah. we just started to distribute everywhere they literally all over the world now mm. but you've got to think back now 20 something years right when uh, i know sikh sites have been around a long time anji yeah but this was almost a revolution yeah, in the sense yeah, that yeah. um danti saj you know mm. people were learning about danti saj just mm. from us going from sikh society to sikh society to sikh society right Anji, yeah. you know in term 1 right between let's say october because freshers week they're not going to do any kirtan darbar maybe yeah. two weeks after they're not going to do any but by week 3 you'll start mm. all the kirtan darbars will start kicking in hanji and from week 3 up to week 12 it's no you know no exaggeration we'd probably do 25 sikh society programs wow right we'd be up at guys hospital which yeah. is a king's college yeah. kirtan darbar yeah. yeah down here in birmingham at the university kirtan darbar the following day wow okay. sheffield we did loads of time manchester we did loads of, they called us sometimes even two three times a term right mm. and some of these kirtan darbars were in the university that was quite novel yeah yeah like in a lecture theater or that's something it. like that's it that was Jadda novel Shaki, very rarely like, they yeah. do that normally they book a gordwara and do it oh, there okay, yeah, but yeah. later they started to do it at the university yeah yeah 
And we used to do 20, 25 of these kirtan darbars, right? You know, wherever someone called us, we'd just go and, go and do the kirtan. Yeah. And uh, they all, the, all the Sikh societies got to know us. And they all had our number. And, you know, we were kind mm. of pretty much the first Jatha they uh, called. So, yeah. and, we've, and the thing with that is we've been doing it ever since. And, yeah. Literally term just finished now, 2023 term one. We yeah. must have done 10, 12 kirtans. Just in wow. term one. That's like your weekends just completely. Is it? I'm assuming it's not weekends. It's, it's not week, weekdays. Wow. Weekday evenings, right? So uh, that's a we serious did serious commitment. Like yeah, we did Liverpool, and uh, Liverpool. Everyone had to finish work and meet up at one of my, uh, you know, one of the Jata Hanji. members' houses yeah. at four o'clock. Yeah. So you can imagine everyone had to give up work time. Yeah, that is because we're all yeah. working now. How, right? how many? So like, or the core group, I guess, like of the Jata, like what? How many individuals is that? And okay, what so instruments do you guys have? That's a good question. Have? So the core is probably around ten of us now. Okay. And there's a rabab. There's five, yeah. seven, eight dilrabas, two mm -hmm. dauses, a yeah. jori, um, the sarangi. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess actually this is a, probably a good plug because we just mm. recorded something with GSA, didn't we? With, uh, That's with it. Keith and so yeah. I guess that is literally that the is core group, the isn't core. it? Yeah, yeah. There so. Maybe a couple of people missing, but yeah. that is pretty much so the that, core. That, that album, Sengaji, will be coming out uh, a little yeah. bit later on this year, so uh, in 2024. So yeah, watch out for that one. Uh, so so the core group then, so you literally, during the weekdays and possibly weekends, you're literally going to like campuses to like do Keith then. That's it. Or Gudwara Saibs. Like, yeah, wow. That's it. And uh, and you know, 25, 1997 till now, that's 26 years, quarter of a century. That's yeah. quite scary when you think of it like that. Yeah, uh, We've been doing that and we'll carry on doing it because we've got a new generation of Sikhs, obviously. That Anji. old generation of 1997, yeah. they're all married with kids. Their yeah. kids are like 18 years old now. Their kids are going to university. Yeah. Right. And uh, and in fact, I met I met one of them at Manchester, and he said, "My dad said he used to listen to you." Wow! And I'm like, "My God, how old am I?" <laughs> <laughs> so <It's like, laughs> time for self reflection. That's you know? it. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, I mean, that, look, the point of that was that we want to promote. Yeah, it's prachar at the end of the day. You know? yeah. yeah, that's a serious yeah. um, level of prachar, really, because. You're 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 essentially you know showing the value of of Dante Sages to people who definitely probably haven't heard him before. Yeah, like without a doubt. When you look back to 1997, where it was just the Nam Tadis who did Dante Saj Gita, mm. and no one else did it, right? Um, you know, and there's probably me. I don't know, not, don't know if there's anyone else non Nam Tari learning Hanji. Dante Saj, right? Yeah. To now, where there are hundreds and hundreds of people who play Tanti Saj, you learn Tanti Saj, right? Yeah. You know, that that's what what it, what we had to do Hanji, yeah. to propagate and and make this instrument these instruments popular to revive yeah. our very traditional and style and that of Gitan. on the revival aspect of like Ra Gitan and, and Tanti Saj Gitan is certainly something that's been coming up in the I've certainly seen a massive resurgence within the last like five years without a doubt. And obviously um, you know, there's a lot more schools now. Obviously, you guys are teaching in, in the Midlands, and there's quite a few uh, more that are up and coming as well that I've seen, which is fantastic because obviously, you know, we need to keep our heritage alive. Um, and it's interesting to see the variances between different um, jate as well, because obviously everyone has their own style, everyone has their own like personal instrument that they always play in a specific way. Um, before we move on to the, um, you know, the Sikh Ramaphone project, there is um, one thing that I want to ask you. So Let's say I'm, I, I want to learn Tanti Saj. Um, how do I know which one I want to learn? Like, how, where do I start from? What's the kind of... Yeah. Is it just a calling that, you know, you feel like you want to do a Dilraba? But I also like Daos. I don't know, yeah. you know. Yeah. How, how, how do you navigate that one? The, the way it normally works is you, we either get students who know I want to learn a Rabab. That's it. You know, it's, right. it's very focused. This is what I want to learn. And then, yes, we do get students who don't really know where, which instrument is for them. So we normally start them on the Dilraba. Okay. And oh, after why is that? they've uh, simply because it's easier to carry around, it's just much more convenient. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Dulce is huge. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. Yeah. Fits into very, instrument. very few boots. Mm. Right. Um, I mean, I'll tell you a story. I mean, we, you know, when we used to do our Sikh Society rounds, yeah. right? Yeah. We got to a phase where we had two Dulces. Okay. Yeah. And they wouldn't fit in the boot. 
<laughs> so I remember okay. going from Birmingham to King's College, yeah. right? The guys' hospital kitan darbar with mm. two tausis on the back seat with three people sitting there. Wow. Okay. These are very heavy instruments, yeah. right? Yeah. And they're sitting there with one taus there, the other taus here, <laughs> and they they couldn't see past that. It was a two-hour yeah. journey, right? Yeah. And um, it's not very mobile instrument, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, is that so because of the peacock design, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's just a very big instrument, mm. right? Very so heavy. All tauses will be designed in that same way. That is correct. Yeah. yeah, and the, the, the taus means peacock in Persian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's designed. It looks like a peacock. Mm. And uh, so yeah, we've had you know wonderful, uh, kind of really interesting stories of our journeys. Yeah. Right. I mean that in itself is a podcast. I remember once we did. Uh, <laughs> there was yeah. a an a, 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 a dasam grant kandabad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was at Baba Sang yeah. where the Nahang Singhs got Hanji. together and they did a dasam bani. Hanji. Dasam grant a kandabad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then on the evening of the Borg, they called us to do Kirtan. Mm -hmm. And there were maybe, I don't know, 15 of us on stage. Anji. And we did Kirtan. And we kind of, when you do, when you go and do these Kirtans, obviously you have to think very carefully about the reed that you're going to, the bandish that you're going to Hanji, sing, yeah. the tune, yeah. the rag, the shabd. Mm -hmm. You can't just rock up and, you know, yeah. just randomly yeah. pick a shabd. You've got mm. to think about it. I, I presume on that smagam you must have done obviously Dasambani, Dasambani, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it so. was uh, what we finished was with was Prabhujuto ke Lajamari, mm. which is a very uplifting, fast-paced, mm. high octave yeah. shabd. So you know the hairs on your back kind yeah, of you yeah, know without yeah. without noticing it there they're raised. When yeah. we finished the shabd, right, and we jalapa fate balaya, my God, the jakare just started, yeah. right, and it was like jakara after yeah. jakara. Yeah. We were like, wow, this is, yeah. you know. A, Perfect ending to this smagam, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've had absolutely wonderful, um, you know, wonderful experiences on the road because Anji. it's not just the turning up at the Sikh site and doing Gita, it's the journey as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, kind of, but yeah, so that, that's just another another story. No, awesome. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that with us. I really yeah. appreciate that. Uh, so moving on to, um, I guess, a sick gramophone collection. Um, this is an extremely important project that you've been working on for decades um, of your life. <laughs> on top of all the other stuff we literally just talked about and uh, what you're um, busy with um, in terms of Gitan. So um, tell us a bit more about that. So what is the Sick Gramophone Collection? How did it come about? Okay. So I've clearly, you know, I've developed an interest in what we call Paratan Gitan. Yeah. Right. So, Bharat and Kirtan at that time, when I got interested in, was Bhai Gopal Singh, 1976. Right. Possibly, yeah. you know, uh, with the studio recording with mm -hmm. violins in there yeah. and uh, very choreographed. Mm -hmm. And that was about as Bharat as it got, yeah. right? And yes, you had Sant Sajan Singh dating to the 60s, mm -hmm. and but I didn't really know much more than that. Anji, yeah. Then some Singh gave me a recording of Bhai Santa Singh. And that was, a, it was again a studio recording. Mm -hmm. It was uh, quite a strange studio recording. It had a Hawaiian guitar in there. Oh, right. Okay. Like, oh, you, like was it a ukulele? It, it, that... it, it's, I don't know whether it's a ukulele, but it, it just sounded like a Hawaiian oh, guitar. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. And I'll tell you which one it is. It's the one that has been Nirenari Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, that's that instrument. Yes, but anyway, yeah. I was like, wow, this is, this is absolutely amazing. And then what I wanted to do was I just got interested in discovering what is the oldest recorded Shabbat, you mm -hmm. know, how far does this go? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't get anywhere until one year I was in uh, Mumbai, mm -hmm. I think it was 2005. Right, okay. Uh, my son was three years old, I remember this, so he came to India. Um, my wife and son came to India. Mm -hmm. um, I was there on a business trip and they okay. kind of joined right at the end of that. Sure. And then I just said, look, I've got to meet someone uh, in Mumbai. Mm. He's a is a record collector, right? And uh, I said it's only it's only six kilometers away or something. But sure. in Mumbai, yeah. six kilometers is like literally <laughs> like, three hours, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I went. I was off, and it took ages to get there. Couldn't find the house, you know. Managed to find it, but and, and it eventually managed to connect with this guy, right? Right. 
And he had a huge collection of gramophone records, right? Going back to the a gramophone company times, and I'm talking maybe 1927, 1921. Wow. Is that, well, that's HMV then, isn't it? Her Majesty's Voices? No, at like... the time, it would have still been the gramophone company. Ah, uh, okay, right? okay. HMV came later. Came after. Oh, okay. It's the same company. It became yeah, yeah, HMV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I kind of spent quite a few hours with him going through his collection. It was just mainly old Bollywood songs sure. and whatever. And I, then I just said to him, look, basically what I'm looking for is Sikh Kirtan, mm. right? And he had, I don't know, I'm not joking, you know, 10, 12,000 gramophones. Right, wow. And we spent ages looking through because he had no index. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No catalogue. Just a pile over here yeah, and a pile over there. <laughs> that's it. And yeah. then we were going through, we didn't find anything. Yeah. And he just said, look, I'll keep an eye out, right? right. Give me your uh, email address and, and I'll yeah. keep an eye out. And then what he did was he said, I've got something for you, right? Kind of emailed me and give me your address and I'll send it to you. No way. And okay. he sent me the Sud Singh Pardan Singh Asadivar, right? Wow. I can't remember the date. So of, he literally uh, posted you the gramophone? Not the gramophone, oh, okay. he, a, a recording of it. Oh, so tape. he digitized it? Yeah. Right, okay. It wasn't really digitized. It was just literally get it. Oh, uh, a recording recorder, device. Oh, look. No. Okay, uh, put jokes. it on the gramophone and <laughs> record it. A third party recording, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, that was just, I was mind blown, mm. right? This is 2005, 2006 possibly. And the yeah. first thing I did with that recording was just put it up there in the internet. Mm. At that time, the internet was, you know, many, very few people knew about it, but I yeah. just distributed that recording. Yeah. So that recording that you see out there is probably my original. You know, that what I year was that recording from? 2000, oh, the recording was 19... I think it was 1927. 1927. Right. Who was the Raggi, sorry? Sud Singh Pardan Singh. Right, okay. So would, was he known in the Panth at that time? Or is that like, at, here's a recording of a Singh and this is his name? And this at is... the time, he would have been known. Right, right. Um, but since then, we've not yeah. known who he is. And right. that's the, one of the problems is all these old Raggis are lost in history. Mm. There are no real records of who they are and what they did and where yeah. they lived and you know yeah. we, it's such a of source the gully mm. right that we just don't know about them history yeah. right yeah absolutely so then i kind of went back to him and said look i need more of these right and uh and and, and i suppose i just began searching 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 every time i went to india you know in the evenings i'd go out and seek these gramophone collectors right i'd meet with them yeah I'd go so a lot how, of these. Sorry, how do you even find a gramophone collector? Like, oh, uh, so he'd tell me that in Mumbai oh, okay. we've got you know there's about twelve, fifteen. So it's like us. a closed circuit, like they're a know. circle, right? <clears throat> right, and they're all, they've all. It's like a fan. It's a hobby club. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. If you collect stamps, you know who the other stamp collectors are, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. You don't collect stamps, do you? I don't. No, collect you stamps. don't collect. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I don't collect. But. <laughs> He then yeah. put me in touch with other gramophone collectors. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I used to, and I still do, go to India on business through the university. And in the evening after I'd done what I you know, need to do for the university, mm -hmm. I'd kind of like eight o'clock or something, I'd be at some gramophone collector's house yeah. going through their collection. And yeah. none of them have catalogued anything. This is the really frustrating <laughs> I think they thing. call them hoarders nowadays, don't yes, they? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've collected... Yeah. And some of these gramophones have been passed down from generation yeah. to generation. I'm talking four or five generations going back to mm. 1903, literally. Right? So were these, I'm assuming these guys went up like, you know, saying these are up for sale and like no. you can buy these. They're like, they're not selling them. They're just die hard collectors. If like, anything, they're buying them. Oh uh, yeah. Right. They won't yeah. sell. They'll buy off you if there's something mm. that you've got that they want. Yeah. Uh, but let me just go back to how mm. I found this Mumbai gramophone collector. Yeah. Right. And what happened was I was in Calcutta and in the market, as I was walking, you know, walking through one of the markets, there's a guy with a stash of old gramophones. Right. And I just kind of had a look and I went through them. I thought, oh, wow, these are old, mm. right? You know, they look old. Yeah. Often they don't have dates on them, but they just yeah. look old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just asked him, look, that what I'm looking for is Sikh Kirtan. He mm. had no idea what that meant, right? Yeah. You know, what is Sikh Kirtan? We're talking Calcutta, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he just said, you just need to find a gramophone collector. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of them here mm. in Calcutta. 
I couldn't do it in Calcutta, but I made sure that in Mumbai, I did a bit of research and found this one person. Yeah. Through him, I got so many connections all over India. Oh, amazing. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking collectors who've got 40,000 gramophones. 40,000. Exactly. Where, where do they even store that much? Because like, uh, gramophones are like pretty big, right? Like yeah. The actual discs are quite big, yeah. like vinyl records. I mean, these, are, these are massive collections. And wow. the, 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 the only problem, like I say, is none of them really have catalogs. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if you want something, they kind mm. of, they, this is the other weird thing. They know exactly where it is, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. But they've also got, thousands and thousands of gramophones that yeah. they've never heard and they don't know where they are and they don't know what they, they probably are. have multiple copies of the same thing possibly as well. like, yeah even that must, yeah. but then what what these gramophone collectors also do is they do what are known as bear picks right. so okay. every month they'll get together let's say there's 13 gramophone collectors in that inner circle in mumbai mm -hmm. Uh, they'll have their bear took at the end of the month and mm -hmm. it'll be at someone's house yeah and they'll say this month like uh you know our theme is Rag Galeon. Oh, right, or okay. our theme is the music of. Right, right, or right. Or our right. theme is, uh, you know, can you see that? Yeah, bring your, bring your gramophones and we'll have a listen. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go through them. That's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And then there'll be backstories and there'll be stories about the record and how yeah. I got it, but also the actual recording itself. Yeah, yeah. And that was like amazing. But look, through all this, I did manage to get in touch with a, a load of gramophone collectors and mm -hmm. eventually... Yeah. I also got hold of a discography, oh, right. which is a list yeah. of the original gramophone company records. So, well, like serial numbers, serial and, numbers, you know, who it years, was, and what it was, and yeah. proper catalogued wow. list. Right? Was that through one of the collectors? You say that is no, that is through one, a library in London. Oh right, okay. Right. Which library is this? Right, is this is the British Library. Oh, literally, okay, yeah. yeah right, right. And I uh, got the the discography. It's, it's yeah. commonly available. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So now. I knew what I was looking for, mm. right? I knew yeah. this is what I need to find. And I saw yeah. these names on there by Meru. Yeah. You know, Uttam Singh Hakim yeah. and uh, Ragis. I had absolutely no idea who they were. And we still have no idea who yeah. they are, right? Decades, or more than a century later, yeah, we still have no yeah. idea yeah. who these guys are. Mm. But yeah, I now had a target that these are, this is what I need. Mm. I can actually say now, have you got this recording? Yeah. 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 And eventually, I managed to get a hundred plus of the uh, original gramophone recordings, and in amongst all that collection, I I found the first ever recorded kirtan. Wow! Right, ever. There's nothing. There's literally nothing before that. Yeah. Right. It's the first ever recorded kirtan. Right. And the date of that is that is 1903. 1903. It was recorded in Lahore, mm -hmm. and the ragi was from Amritsar. So it must have taken him a day Which to get to. That? that was by Meru. Okay, yeah. I think it was by Meru. I've mm -hmm. been feeling a bit foggy now, but you yeah. know that 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 was the first ever recorded gr gramophone, and wow. he travelled from Amritsar mm. to Lahore to do the recording. And so, th the, and they travelled to Lahore because of, of the the studio. That's like, where the studio was. Right. Okay. Right. There were two or three studios in India. One was in Lahore, one was in Mumbai, and I think one was in Calcutta. And they were Brit obviously British-led, British, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was uh, Geisberg and Dilnut, and they they led the expedition. Right? So, sorry, Geisberg and... Dilnut. Dilnut, and, and what, is that a company, or is that no, like the guys who No, they are like the recording engineers. Oh, right, okay. Right, right they're right, the right. recording engineers mm. who set off from the UK... Yeah from England all the way to India specifically to record for the gramophone company. Oh, right. Okay. I'm assuming they would have done that across the empire, right? At across that time. the empire. So there's yeah, Chinese yeah. recordings, there's wow. recordings from different parts of the empire. Mm. And uh, there's some loads of recordings obviously here in the UK. Yeah. And uh, they, they decided that we want to go to India. They went to India. They did a, t a couple of tours, maybe three tours. Right. And they just went from place to place just finding artists yeah. and recording them. Wow. Right. And uh, I mean, they've done, you know, they've done the Pant a huge service. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, actually, yeah. Because if it wasn't for them, we would never yeah. have had these gramophones, right? Because I'm see. assuming the tech probably wasn't around like common place, like not in a bin or like, you no. know. No, you know, uh, th th this is very, very, very delicate and very yeah. expensive equipment. Yeah. 
and uh, the gramophones did not hit the bins for around 20 years later. Mm. Took a long time to get into the bins. And uh, so, look, they recorded anything and everything, yeah. right? They didn't know what to record. So, the yeah. way it worked was um, they, you know, these gore have no idea, you know, they can hear all this different music, but yeah. they have no idea yeah. what to record. So, mm. what they did was they had to have an agent. Right. And it was the agent that told them what to record. And the agent was someone local mm. who had connections in all the theatres Okay. Right. And the musicians and through connections of connections of connections was yeah. able to bring people together. So it's not like they even like try to seek out people from Gudware. They literally oh. went to an agent because of a musical theater. Like that's interesting. Yeah. Like, well, they went to an agent because they said, look, we don't know who to record. Can you tell us who we should be recording? Mm. And they paid him to go out there and bring talent right. back to them to yeah. record. Somehow, uh, the word got to, by Meru, by Uttam Singh, and, and, and by Rura, mm. you know, and, and all the Sikh Raggis. Yeah. Not all of them, but, yeah. you know, a lot of them. And a few of them decided to turn up and do the recording. Right, okay. Interesting. Right. So they, they made their own way to the recording studio, and then what I, I just I, I imagine like what does a recording session look like, like I, what yeah like so you, you turn up to some building in in Lahore, there's two gore and and they're they're expecting you to just perform and like and they probably don't even know what you're going to perform yeah. so like there's probably three or four gore, and there's a horn in front of you, right you know it's just a big horn right right and you're going to sing into the horn right. Right, and there's the three of you sitting there, mm -hmm. and the uh, the light comes on, mm -hmm. to, which and when the light comes on, it means start singing. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Right, and one of the engineers there will be sitting there with a the watch, okay. right, because yeah. they can't. There's a limit to how much they can record, mm -hmm. and and it varied a tiny bit, but let's just say it's about two and a half minutes. Yeah. And when it gets to two minutes, let's say ten seconds. Mm -hmm. He starts waving his arms around to say, right. you need to stop now. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, so they had to, you know, they literally just had to stop singing. Yeah. And the Raggis soon worked that out, right? That we have to somehow get this Shabd into two and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah. So pick all the short, you know, short Shabds. So, that you yes, can... you've got the short Shabds. But yeah. what is weird, you've also got... Um, Shabds that would normally take about 20 minutes. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. There's a Valamba Dari, the Sinra Ganara, right. um, Manare, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, this is a, a read that goes very slowly. Right. And um, it's in Chardal. Right. So it's yeah. a very slow read. Mm -hmm. But one of the Sikragis recorded it in two and a half minutes. The whole wow. read. Right, so this is the thing, you know, when you yeah. listen to these gramophone recordings, they do sound a bit strange. Yeah, very high pitched, actually. Very honest. high pitched yeah. and very fast. Yeah. Because they have to just get through the shabd, right? Mm. And uh, it's also interesting in some of them, you can actually hear that they've got, they, they, they're almost being told to finish because. <laughs> But you, you can know, hear the guy with the watch in the background saying, it, you know, "Yeah." <laughs> so it's 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 quite quite remarkable, you know, yeah. how how what what's happening. There. Oh, that's really interesting because I I was uh, during this process of um, working on the on this project, I was um, trying to research as to like how gramophones are even made because it's, it's an interesting device because the horn obviously is also used to play back, but it's also used um, they use a horn to obviously get the vibrations from the performance, um, and the vibrations go through and then onto a needle which then basically makes an impression into the wax disc that they use. And then from the wax disc, they then take that to, I assume, a lab. And then through a, a process of electrolysis, they basically get a layer of metal on top of that to then make a negative of the positive. Because technically, the wax disc, you can actually play that because the way that it's scratching and making the grooves, it's like if any of, any of you kind of know about vinyl discs. Vinyl discs, obviously, are made of like a vinyl, which is basically plastic. Uh, but back then, uh, the discs used to be made of um, celerac or, or, yeah. um, or something. Celac. Celac, that's yeah. it, celac, yeah. So celac is like actually uh, harnessed from like a bug 
apparently. Yes, uh, yes. And then they used to mix that with slate and other, um, you know, things like um, I think like wood chippings or something. And they basically then, um, you, once you made the gramophone, then that's it. But you can only get like a thousand pressings from like a single uh, copy. So I do wonder, like, you know, how many, how many copies of like albums or records would they have actually made? Yeah, I'm not sure. They wouldn't have made many. Uh, I mean, the other problem they had was there wasn't really a massive market for these. Yeah, distribution would be a problem. Yeah, right? like, there wasn't a massive market. Product, so you like, yeah, you couldn't take these. Uh, Indian recordings back to the UK and sell them here. They had to be sold back in market. Oh, interesting. Um, I, I would have thought it was the other way around. I would have thought that they probably bring them back to, to England and, and sell them yeah, here. Yeah, but the because population of England was tiny, right? Mm. And, you know, not many people had an interest in gramophone. Um, there was a much, much bigger population over there with a much bigger interest. It took a long time for gramophones to take off in India. Mm. And uh, and when they did, um, you know, kind of the twenties, thirties, forties, when yeah. they got into villages, uh, big time. Yeah. Um, you know, Bollywood music became so popular, mm. right? You know, it was just like it just kind of flooded the market. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then what what you get is. Um, you get like a kind of a, a new phase in Kirtan as well. Mm -hmm. And that new phase is that Bollywood music is very popular and Raggis are kind of starting to put Girtan reads onto those yeah, Bollywood reads. And, things, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you, you know, this is where the Bollywoodization of Girtan starts. Mm. And when, do you, when do you think that happened then? So is that back in what, then? I reckon early the 90s? Uh, uh, no, the uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, that right, kind of okay. time. Wow, yeah. Right, because that's when Bollywood records started to enter the villages and mm. uh, people, you know, what used to happen was they, you know, there was one person in the village who had a gramophone, right? right. Yeah. And uh, every night people would gather at that person's house. Yeah. Or, you know, the village square. Right, right. Yeah, they would, yeah. you know, he'd be gracious enough to bring it bring to the it village there square and, and put it on yeah. and everyone just gathered there and listened to it because it was... It's like an open air cinema. That's like, it. Where we just were like yeah. music. That's pretty cool. And uh, you know, it must have been a remarkable experience for people. I can you know, imagine. To hear yeah. the sound it's like coming out. It's like magic, yeah. isn't it? You know, like yeah. you, you show them at that time, like a phone or something. They'll probably, you know, have a Freak trip. Freak out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in terms of like the actual records that we know, like through the the catalog that you got from the British Library, like how many actual records do we know us are like Geetan or like. Um, I think there's Kavitas as well, yeah. right? So as part of the collection. So like how many do we think we, we can probably okay. so, know, acquire? This is the thing with, with Raggis, with Rababis at the time. So all these early record, uh, record Kitewa, they're all mm -hmm. Rababis. Right, okay. They're from the Muslim families, right, many of okay. them. And, and, and it's their profession to sing, right? It's so their profession like, to sing. So a Rababi isn't somebody who just plays a Rabab, right? Yeah, no. They, we just call them Rababi right. because they're from Mardana, the Rabab players' family right. or that lineage, and yeah, there's yeah. some kind of distant connection. Yeah. So we were not Rababi, then they are, mm. right? And their their profession was to sing, right? right. You know, bottom line is that yeah. they did Kirtan, yes, mm -hmm. but they also sang at weddings right. and functions, yeah. right? So they did a lot of wedding singing, yeah, and then they sang Kirtan. Mm -hmm. At Gurdwaras, I At Gurdwaras. Right. And they also sang Kavitas. Right. And a Kavita is a poem? At the Gurdwara, yeah. Right. Kavitas are, are religious spiritual poems, mm -hmm. and they would sing those as well. What about Daddi then? Do they also do Daddi? Is that, or is that it's like they, a different they, thing? No, they wouldn't do Daddi. That's a completely different right. set of skills. Mm -hmm. um, so now with these Rababis, what we have is we don't really have the popular songs i don't have many of those mm -hmm. but i've definitely got the kavadas right and obviously all the kirtans mm -hmm. now in the kavada collection what we have is the first so if you if you want to trace the history of bhangra music yeah right modern day bhangra music mm -hmm. we can go right back now mm -hmm. and and actually listen to the first ever recorded folk uh, song and that, that's Punjab. the Kavita, right? That's a Kavita, right? Right, right, and that's part of our collection, mm. right? The first ever recorded piece was a, a Sabd, mm -hmm. and the second ever recorded piece was a Kavita, mm -hmm. 
Wow. So in amongst that collection, we have all of them. Yeah. Now, this is the other thing. At the time, Gurdwara de Vich, you were allowed to sing Kavitas. It Haan wasn't, ji. there was no issue. The only place you weren't allowed to sing it was at Darbar Sahib. Yeah, yeah. But ev- pretty much everywhere else, Kavitas were fine. And I assume that's because Gavitas. it's like spiritual in nature, right? That's like, right, you know, yeah. Love for God, et cetera, and singing about that. And that's it. Spiritual journeys and stuff, right? So, you know, the Raggis of the time, they'd do a Shab, they'd do a Kavita, they'd do another Shab, you know, it, it was just, you know, they didn't change what, what they were doing. Yeah. So what's interesting about this as well is um, obviously, I guess before we go into that, um, can you just uh, help us understand like, so you've you've been on this journey, you've collected some gramophones recordings. Do you, do you have any physical discs? No, yeah. I don't have a so single you got physical digital, disc. So you got yeah. digitized versions from some of the collectors. But then how did you acquire the bulk of like your actual collection? Like what The does, bulk what? I went to EMI. As in EMI Records? EMI Records. As in Abbey Road Studios? That is correct. Wow. But not, they're not at Abbey Road anymore. Yeah, yeah, but like they're part uh, of the same company. Yeah, right? I went yeah. to them and got the bulk of them. Wow. And when I went there, I managed to... The, the ones that I already had, which weren't very clear... Yeah. I managed to get much better recordings from them. Yeah. Right. Well, that's probably the, because they have the masters, right? That's right. Wow. So they didn't have some of the ones I already had. Mm. So even on their own collection was a bit, <laughs> yeah. bit patchy. Yeah. But through both of them, I managed to get quite a large collection. Now, just going back to my Indian collectors. Mm-hmm. So there's me saying, you know, I've, I've managed to, there's some guy in Chennai, for example, you know, it's kind of ringing me saying, I've got something for you, you know, okay. when you next yeah. come yeah. and so on. And I'm okay, that's brilliant. I said, I'm not next coming now until November. Is there any chance you can record it for me and send yeah. it to me? And he's like, yes, I can. And what I'd do is he'd play and he'd just put a tape recorder there. And in the back, you can hear the tuk-tuks. Oh, and the, the traffic. All the traffic. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, you know, it, it's a really poor recording. Mm. But for me, I, I was just like, wow, I, I don't yeah. care how bad this recording yeah. is, right? You know, this is something. And, and I'd ask them... You know, I'd asked them to tell me more about the recording. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't really able to tell me much. They had no idea how old the recordings were because on the label it had no dates. Oh, interesting. So okay. If you have a look at the dates, uh, the labels I've given you. Yeah, yeah. None of them have dates. That's a good point, actually. I didn't, I just, I didn't realize right. that. But we only know because of the archive, the disc- right? The discography. Yeah, the discography. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, and the label is interesting because all it is, it's just the label on the vinyl. Yeah, yeah. There's no sleeve, no artistic yeah, sleeve, yeah. It's not right? Like an album cover or That's something. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, 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 a vinyl with a, a label on it. Yeah, yeah. Right, and the label will say the ragi name, the shabd, yeah. and sometimes it will say the rag. Yeah, it'll have a serial number on there. Yeah, um, and and sometimes it gets it wrong. So right. some of the labels are wrong, which yeah. I've kind of shown you where yeah, the label yeah, says yeah. one thing, but the shabd is actually something else. Yeah. Well, the and rag is wrong as well. I that's think right. on volume one, we've got a, a track. I think that's, it was Ragzilla, uh, which it. was actually sung in, but it was, I think it was Bero. I that's think it, it was said, right? Yeah. yeah. So you've got the odd few errors as well. We don't know how those errors crept in, but there yeah. are some errors in there. Um but yeah, so you know what I got, all, I've, I've got it all together. And then the next thing we wanted to do was, you know, obviously we don't want to keep it to ourselves. So yeah. over the last twenty years, I've met too many people who uh, they they annoy the living daylights out of me in the sense that I've got this, but I'm not going to give it to you, right? Oh yeah, no, no sharing. I've got this recording, yeah. but I can't give it to you, yeah. right? It's like this, it's like some kind of power trip, right? Yeah. Yeah. That I'm I'm important. I've got something you want, and I'm not going to give it to you. You know, it's just so stupid and annoying, mm. right? First thing GSA did, so yeah. I made this a GSA project, yeah. right? Say, yeah. guys, we need to distribute these. We need to release them. And uh, what we decided was that as soon as we've got it all ready, we just want to release it to the world and make it available free of charge. And that's yeah. what we are doing now, mm-hmm. right? Um, and we just want to get all of them out there. And, um, you know, just let everyone listen to them. Yeah. No, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, when, when I first um, spoke to you about this and, and offered, obviously, Geet and Vice Services and just the the opportunity to even work on something like this, it's like absolutely incredible. Like, 
honestly, the first time I heard the recordings, I did actually get goosebumps. That's not even a joke. Yeah. Like, I was like, how how is this never been heard? Like we literally are listening to Kirtan voices of like six or the babbies that have literally never been heard for like 125 years. Like yeah. it's insane. Um, it's not just that it's 125 years, but this is the first ever record. Yeah, we know yeah, that there's nothing older than this. Literally, right? like this is the epitome right. of like Bharat and Kirtan recordings. Yeah. The definition of Bharat and yeah, Kirtan, as you said. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the other thing, interesting thing is that one of them has the Jakara in there. Yeah, this is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? I know we'll yeah. go into more detail later about yeah, this in so, the next episode. Yeah, so, I mean, this is, like, you know, the, the, I, I, I don't know how it came about, but the Raggi has sang the Shabd, and they've, they, they probably had about, I don't know, 10 seconds left at yeah. the end. Yeah, And it just, just gives out a Jakarta. Yeah, right? it's, pretty, it's pretty wicked, though. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's and we've wicked. also got, um, we've got one re- record of the Ardas. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's a bit different to the Bantik Ardas. Right. In what way? Um, well, y- y- you know, the, 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 this was round about the time when the Pantikar Das was being formed. Right. What, what 1903, year? 1904. I don't know the exact dates oh, okay, yeah. when it was happening. So these recordings, sorry, just to clarify, these recordings are literally like within one or two years of each other, right? Yes. All of the whole collection. They're all within when the two Gore years. They're either 1903 or 1904. Right, 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 right. They're within two years of each wow. other. Okay. Right. And uh, the Ardas is, uh, you know, it's just, like I say, it's the first ever recorded Ardas. Mm. There's another one that was recorded about 10 years later. Yeah. And those are the only two recorded Ardases that we have. Wow. And what about Asadivar? Is there like anything Asadivar, more Asadivar, we're unique probably looking sense? at 1919 or 1920. Right. Yeah. And what we have, so the Sod Singh Asadivar that I had, uh, that was 24 records Literally like one yes, per shaka. One yeah, shaka yeah. per record. Wow. And what my friend in Mumbai had to do was convert each one. Wow. One by one. And I was like, you know, Thank you to that friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just so absolutely so, you know, so grateful. And, you this know. This forms part of the collection, right? No, this this uh, this, this is actually not Bharatan at all. Right, right okay. It's this is like out modern there. day 1990. Oh, right? okay. Fair enough. Yeah, so yeah. this is commonly available. You can actually go onto YouTube and listen to their Asadivar. Oh, yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, so that is much more modern, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm kind of focused on 1903, yeah, 1904. Yeah. Amazing, right? I mean, I'm I'm kind of intrigued by the whole whole journey. I'm intrigued by how did these ragis end up in that studio? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, you know, did the agent come to Darbar Sahib? Mm. Did he go there or send someone there and say, we need, you know, the Sikh people, you know, they sing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they play a bit of music. We need some of them, right? Mm. Can you send some? Um, did they know who to go to, who to approach? Yeah, yeah. When they then spoke to the Sikhs, this is what happened. Some of them said, do not go and sing Goria Kolna Jake Gayo. That thing will take your voice. They actually, they were superstitious. Oh, oh and is it like a magical thing? Like, that is there's gonna, magic here, oh, Jadu right. Mantaria, right? And right. that it's going to take you, it sucks your voice out. And you do more gone, Wow. So there were lots of ragis who didn't dare go there. Wow. And uh, sing at the um, at the gramophone. Uh, and that's studio. literally because they literally have never seen this tech before, right? That's right. It's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, some of them, 1903 have they don't know what a gramophone is mm, yeah yeah all they've got is someone's turned up and said we need you to come to lahore because yeah. we're going to record you and it's like what does record you mean <laughs> yeah you know? yeah can you imagine right that that you know yeah, 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 right yeah let alone records mm. and uh but anyway so they then they had to make the journey all the way to lahore I don't know how many hundred miles it is. It uh, you know yeah. be useful to kind of know what. Well, that back distance. then it must have been quite the journey, right? It's exactly. Like, yeah. So mm. I mean, there might have been a train to be fair mm. by that time because the Gore were yeah, running yeah. train yeah, tracks yeah, all over yeah, the country, yeah. and uh, so then they rock up, they turn up, right? And then there's a studio, and uh, you know the whole setting is a bit strange and yeah. weird, right? And there's three ragis sitting there. Yeah. And the way they configured the stage mm-hmm. was that the jury player had to sit at the back. Oh, okay, yeah. And the reason that for that was there was no volume control. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if the jury player sat at the front, it was too loud. Yeah. So yeah. the jury player had to sit at the back, 
right? Mm. And from what I'm told is sometimes it was not just at the back, it was like five meters behind. Wow. Depending on how the studio was configured. Yeah, yeah. And then they'd explain to them, this is how, this is what's going to happen. This is what you have to do. Mm. And then the ruggies would have to work out, well, this job normally it takes us about 15 minutes to do this job. Right? <laughs> yeah, you've got gonna, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, we've got two <laughs> minutes to do it. So they'd yeah. have to be very enterprising. Yeah innovative in many ways mm. to then get that shab into that two and a half minute recording yeah so i guess in that sense then actually uh, dr g like it's not actually a true representation of actually what the gitan would have been like really that's right uh, obviously right yeah so but it's still interesting to like hear the compositions and the rags and the rita and, and and that kind of thing i guess that's it. a very quick snapshot exactly so i mean a good a classic example of that is I said Manare Japo Gur Gopal. Yeah, mm. this is a Chartal Rita. Anji, yeah. That when you sing it, it's easily 15, 20 minutes end to end, mm. right? You know, and Batake. Yeah. You know, a Gaidia Rita, right? So we know how it actually is. Yeah. And we know how they had to record it. Yeah. So we could almost reverse engineer all those recordings yeah, to what they down. actually should sound like, <laughs> right? You yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that these are the things they had to do to get those yeah. recordings up. What's really interesting as well is actually like I, I think the first couple of questions I asked you when I first heard it and, and got over my goosebumps was like, hang on, like do we? I can hear definitely hear a vajja, definitely hear a jodi or a tabla, but like where's the sages? Yeah, that's a good question. I've got a feeling that by this time, the the Bajja influence had already perpetrated across Punjab. Right. right? That okay. Danti Saj had already started to become very rare. Right. And I say that because there was no other excuse not to have Danti Saj. If they were playing them, then they would have brought them to the studio because there's plenty of recordings of Danti Saj. Mm. The Gore have recorded stars, Sarangi, Sarod. From that era. From that era. Right, right, yes, right. Sehenais. Yeah, yeah. Every Saj you can think of has been recorded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, if the Ragis had a Tanti Saj, they wouldn't have rocked up and, and, and they, they said, no, sorry, we're not having that instrument, right? Yeah. yeah. It's because I, I believe they, that, that the Baja influence had already spread across the whole of Punjab. And it probably might have been 1850, 1860, at which point the whole of Punjab had started to just say, you know what? Yeah, it's just, just easier, isn't it? Yeah, play yeah. some keys, yeah. Well, that's interesting, though, because obviously then, you know, I guess from an academic perspective, like what's the kind of year or, or uh, time period that we believe or what we think we know um, when the Sarge actually kind of disappeared i guess well what we have is we have the carpenter painting i can't remember the date but i think it's 1850 or thereabouts right it's the one that appeared in the london illustrated news in the uk right okay it's a painting of darbar saib yeah and the tanti saja there oh right okay so he was yeah. there and yeah, it's just yeah. an eyewitness account of yeah, what he yeah. saw yeah so we know the saj were there at that time yeah uh, and we know that by around 1903, this sergeant, you know, they they probably started to disappear if they hadn't completely disappeared by now. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's kind of that crucial 50-year period yeah. where a lot happened, right? And, um, y you know, in terms of why it happened, that's a different story. But, uh, y you know, it the, the, the I call it the rot, but the rot had already set in. Mm, yeah. Well, it's resurging now. That's the main thing, right? Yes. So it will yeah. come back eventually. Guru Sahib Ji Kipa Dina. Why no recordings at Darbar Sahib? Why? No recordings at Darbar Sahib. Well, they, they, it, their studio wasn't a mobile studio. Right. Right. They weren't going from place to place doing recordings. Yeah. And I've got a feeling, um, y y you know, that if they had turned up at Darbar Sahib, I, I, I've got a feeling they might not have been allowed to record Yeah, they would have been chucked out, yeah. Because, I, I mean, the, the equipment obviously takes quite a bit of space as well. It's not yeah. like just like a microphone nowadays, yeah. right? It's a big, uh, you know, like that funnel um, dish that you have. And then obviously, you know, I assume they obviously would want some kind of barrier between the actual recording location and then obviously yeah. the actual... That's why in disc. some of the old photos, what you see is a wall... Mm, yeah, with the light at the top, yeah, and a funnel coming out of the wall. All right, okay. And then yeah. you've got some photos where they're sh sh showing it side on, yeah, and you can see the recording engineer on the other side of the wall, yeah, yeah. and he turns the light on <laughs> right, to okay. say start, yeah, right. 
So, um, yeah, it, it would have been a very, very strange experience this would have mm. for the Ruggies. And in, in the collection that, that uh, we're planning to share, then what kind of uh, rags compositions do we have? Like, what's the range? Like, is it, I believe we've got Dasambani in, in uh, Volume this, 1 this as well, don't Dasambani, we? So. There's, a there's a lot of Hindustani Shastriya rags, right. Hindustani rags. A few Sikh rags, you know, I say Sikh rags, they're not really mm -hmm. Sikh rags, like Bero. Right. Right, rags that we recognize right, in the right. Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few of those as well. So what I want to do is I just want to take us back a bit more. So mm -hmm. I've already said that the first ever gramophone Girtan recording was 1903. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something before uh, then? There was, yes. So there's two recordings made of a Sikh. Before then, they were made right. in 1899 in London. Oh, right. Okay. Right. Right. And they were, the, 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 out of all the recordings that the gramophone company made, these were recording number 10 and recording number 11. Right. Number one to nine were Quranic verses. Right. Okay. Uh, kind of uh Brahms, Shastras, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. kind of Hindu texts, yeah. right? Yeah. And then recording number 10 is just referred to as hymns of Guru Nanak. Oh. That's all it says in the discography. Wow. Right? It doesn't say what hymns. Wh who, who was it? Did they name the... This the, is the other the thing. Sing, so in the discography, it names everyone else. Right. Right? It names all the other recording voices. Yeah, yeah. The two Seek records, there's no name. Uh, there's no name next to those two um, entries. It I'm just says hymns of Guru Nanak. That's uh, all it obviously says. Obviously, I'm going to ask the question, like, do we have that? Or like, how do we no, get we hold don't. of that? No, we don't. So that, that I've gone absolutely mental trying yeah, to get reminds, hold of. Right? Yeah. I've gone absolutely berserk trying to get hold mm. of the first two ever recorded sounds. Yeah. EMI don't have them. What they're saying is those were shipped to Calcutta. Mm-hmm. And the Calcutta factory burnt down in the 40s. Oh, man. And they believe it got lost there. Oh, dear. But my view is that yeah. then th 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 there were gramophone collectors. Who, yeah. There's someone somewhere in the world who must have a copy Probably of them. Probably in a pile, in a, in a, in a pile under a coffee somewhere table in somewhere. Kochi, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... We you know we need to organize a better with these guys and yes, just say, bring yeah. your oldest Sikh gramophone yes. recordings and then yeah. maybe it will just like come out. So... You know, what happened was that I, um, one of them is an Ardas, okay? One of them just says hymns of Guru Nanak Dev. Yeah, and the no, other one and says... And the other one just says Ardas. Ah, right. So then this is what happened, right? I got sent a recording, mm. no details of what it is, who it is. Yeah, from a collector. From a collector. Yeah. And I started to listen to it and it's the Ardas. The Ardas. It's it's an Ardas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started yeah. to listen to it. Right. And I, I just got really emotional. I, I thought, imagine. this is it. Oh, right? God, yeah. This is the original Ardas. Well, don't keep us in suspense. Is right. it the actual no, Ardas? No, it isn't the actual oh, Ardas man, because okay. then what happened was yeah. for a long time, I believed this was it. Yeah, right. this is recording number 11 yeah. made by the gramophone company of a Sikh voice doing the Ardas wow. here in London. Yeah. Then what happened was I got hold of the full discography and then I also got hold of the same recording from EMI. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. They had it yeah. properly documented Got you. as part of the 1903 collection. Oh, okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, right? yeah, yeah. So that's when my heart just dropped and oh, I thought, man. this isn't the original Ardas. It's good yeah. nevertheless. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And that's part of the collection that, that will be released, That is part right? of the collection. Amazing, okay. Uh, who does the Ardas then? Uh, is, is it Gala? I think it's uh, Uttam Singh Hakim, I think, okay. did that Ardas. I can't sure. remember which that's one okay. we've yeah, got. We'll, we'll, we'll release it at some point. Um, but... Yeah. But the point is, there is still this sense of intrigue, yeah. right? And that intrigue is, A, where is this recording, mm. right? The Bunt wants these two recordings, yeah, yeah. right? 100%. Number one. If anybody out there knows, please. Yeah. <laughs> and number two, <laughs> you know, let us know. Um, just who were these Sikhs? Yeah. Where did they come from, right? That The, the British, you know, the Gore managed Do you know where them. in London they would have recorded that? Like, yes, I that? have the address. It's now, it's actually at a pizza shop now. No way. Right. Okay. Outside so the pizza random. shop, there's yeah. a blue plaque. 
Right, okay. Right, which says this is the site of the original gramophone recording. Right, and it was in the basement of that piece. Like the company? The company, Oh, right, yes. okay, wow. That's where they did their original recordings. Uh, and over time, obviously, uh, it's been sold off, and now today... That's so random, though. So basically, like, late 1800s, there's a random singer in London who goes to some basement to record the Erdos. That's right. That's so random. We have no idea who he is, um, no names. Uh, we, yeah, just got to... <laughs> It's for a researcher. These kind of things are very, very frustrating. Yeah, you know, I can they, imagine. they, you're just desperate. To kind of. Well, find out. to be honest, with you, uh, Doctor G, like the the amount of work that you put in, like just even hearing some of the stories, some of the stuff, like you've told me, you know, uh, off camera, like it's just unbelievable. Like the journey you've been on to get these recordings is just like the testament to your um to your perseverance. Yeah. Like, because I can imagine how frustrating it must be, and then obviously chasing all these collectors, and then I assume obviously collectors are quite, you know tight with their collection they probably don't always want to share no well this is the thing right uh with those collectors aren't mm. i have to say they're very gracious mm. you know they want to share yeah uh their their spirit is very different to a lot of Sikhs that i've met mm. right who medical bought brani recording by you are but you know oh, that, okay. that kind of attitude yeah, yeah, right yeah uh, every oh, I, I reckon every collector I've met, if I've said kind of a copy of that, they've yeah. said, "Yeah, that's fine. I'll do it." And Amazing, I'll, yeah. So that that's really good, and they're never, you know, there's never, a, they've never even. I, I've paid them for the recording. I've said, "Tell me what it costs Aren't or whatever." You, yeah. yeah. But they're never really after money either. Yeah. You know, they're not yeah. saying they don't have a rate. Yeah. They yeah, don't yeah. have a rate card or anything, sure. right? Say so if you want recording, this is how much it's going to yeah. cost. They don't even do that. I guess in 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 kind of contrast though, obviously the actual bulk of the collection that's going to be releasing has been properly digitized by EMI Records, right? Yes. So, so. the one that we're so this is it now. I've got two collections. One is a collection that is not releasable, right? It's not because I don't want to release it, but mm -hmm. it's so poor quality, right? There's just no point, right? There's yeah. no point releasing yeah. it. And what we want to get to is a stage where we get the original and we can digitize it and yes. release it properly. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got the collection that's been professionally digitized by EMI. Yes. Yeah. That's the one we're releasing. There's yeah. plenty of those to keep everyone busy for the next <laughs> three, four how years. How many is that? Uh, the, well, in total, I have 127 records. Wow. Of that 127, how many are releasable? I haven't counted, mm -hmm. right? There might be 30, 40, 50, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but even I suppose even after we've released those, if we get nowhere with all the others, we might mm. as well just release those as well in whatever quality sure. there are. Sure. They are yeah, right. Yeah. Just get them out there, right? Um, what I'm hoping this does is that it does create a, a desire to do more research mm -hmm. to find out uh, to actually try to trace these ruggies back. Anji, yeah. You know who were they? Um, you know these are our first seek voices. Yeah. Right, the musicians they need the, to be in a hall of fame and, somewhere. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? And son of Bataini right? And yeah. this is, you know, such a shame. So you're, you obviously you're an academic. So you're a professor. Uh, what is it? Cybersecurity, right? Cybersecurity. I'm a university reader in cybersecurity and right. at the University of Right. Completely different field. Amazing, but yeah. still amazing. But I guess obviously uh, my point being is that you're obviously very academic. So. You're writing papers on this? Yeah. So what I'm also doing with this collection is I'm writing a, a, a papers around that collection. And in the papers, I want to explore the whole journey of me getting them, but mm -hmm. also the what we're hearing. Yeah. Right. And also the whole experience of doing that recording. Mm. Right, and uh, just tell the whole story of how it all happened for these ruggies. Amazing. And uh, the idea is my, you know, one of my goals really is to propagate Sikh music to the Western world. Anji, yeah. To teach the Western world about Sikh music. And uh, we completely undersell ourselves as a community, mm -hmm. right? We are the most musical community Anji, yeah. on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. you can't have a single ceremony without music. Without music, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's foundation. Uh, yeah. you know, and not only that, it's not just kirtan, but it's the depth of the rag and the way the guru went out of his way to create a musical infrastructure, a mm. musical structure, 
for the Guru Granth Sahib. Hanji, yeah. The main yeah. Sikh, the only, you know, the key Sikh scripture. Hanji. And we just don't bat an eyelid. We just kind of mm. just shrug it off like it's yeah. nothing, right? And the world mm. needs to know about this. Hanji. They need to know about the, the music in our Bani, the music in our Dharm. Yeah. Right. And that's what I'm doing with these papers is to kind of, you know, just tell the world about the gramophone collection. Yeah. No, amazing. Thank you so much for, I guess, for, from my perspective, anyway, from Geet and Vibe perspective, just for the opportunity to work on these amazing recordings. And honestly, I like, I honestly cannot wait until we, we release these recordings, as I'm sure you absolutely <laughs> cannot wait. So what's going to be the process for the release then? Like, um, uh, so I, I believe this podcast will be coming out roughly around the time when there's going to be an event. But what's the idea behind that? Like, what are we going to be doing? Okay, so on the 16th of March, we have a day-long event called Celebrating Sikh Music. And uh, this is going to be an annual affair. It's going to happen every year. And the idea here is that it just what it says on the tin, which is celebrate Sikh music, right? It's not just celebrating Kirtan, but we've got Sikh musicians who are music performers. That you know, a sitar player, yeah, uh, who's like Rupa spent her whole life playing the sitar. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. And her life and yeah. her achievements need to be celebrated. Yeah, right. 100%. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Kirtan, we've got all those different genres of Kirtan. Yeah. When you start mm. thinking about that, right, mm. all there's so many different genres. Yeah. Every genre has its yeah. own story and its history. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Akhand Kirtani mm. Jatha Kirtan has mm. its own history and story. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that history and story is, and yeah. it's quite embarrassing. Mm. Well, hopefully we'll have a podcast right? with you know, somebody. Why can't to, we have to, to someone coming that, yeah. in and telling us what is the history of this kirtan? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, right? There's yeah. Daddi Vara. Oh, yes. The Daddis have yeah. their own traditions, right? Yeah. And I'd like to know more about their traditions. I, interesting, actually, is now that you mentioned it really quickly, I'm surprised that there was no... Well, or are there any Daddi recordings? There are no Daddis no, in okay. that collection. I'm guessing it's probably, what, two-minute recording. Maybe they couldn't or... No, didn't. there's no excuse because if people are doing 20-minute recordings, yeah. the Duddies could have done it. I, I, I think we need to think about why there's no Duddies mm. in there. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that's what the event is all about. And, and, and this year, the key focus of that event yeah. is the launch of the gramophone. Uh, project yeah next year we'll have a different theme but this year it's all about the gramophone project amazing and is there going to be any other road shows are you planning to do any live events anywhere else yeah uh, so we want done? to go around the uk right and uh release an album at each venue okay no pressure so <laughs> each venue yeah. will have a, an album release yeah. the album will have five of the gramophone recordings in there yep five or six you know we'll work yeah. out how many yeah and then for the next one, we need to start preparing those. And, yeah. and that's that's what it's going to be. I think um, so. The idea is to have, I think we've got enough Kavitas that we could probably have like one or two in each album yes. release as well. So yeah. the first album releasing on the 16th of March is also going to have the f very first Kavita that yeah. you were talking about earlier and then uh, four shabbas and one of those is Dasan Bani as well yeah and it also has the Jakarta so yes. it's, a bit, it's, a, it's a pretty wicked album yeah. to us. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK, cool. Um, so I think what if so let's make a close now so uh in terms of from your perspective um you know you clearly have a huge amount of experience and you've gained a lot of wisdom in your journey and and you continue to do so so what can you share with us and what would you like to say to somebody who is kind of just about learning about you know sick music gurbani kitan what would be your uh kind of um advice to somebody who wants to learn kitan or walk down the spiritual pathway of, of Sikh music? Okay, so there's probably a lot I can say, but the one one thing that I say to all my students who are learning Kirtan is it's trying to understand the significance of what they're doing, that mm. this is very significant. When you're doing Kirtan on the stage, you are the Guru's voice. The Guru is speaking through you. Anji, yeah. So don't take this lightly. Mm. You know, Jumevari yeah, you are you have a responsibility now Anji. to project the voice of the guru to the Sangat. Mm. And um so that's one thing is you know, too many Girtanis have just made this a job. Mm. You know, the, the jobs worths, you know, they just turn up, rock up, do their shop, then go home, right? Mm. And there's, there seems to be no spiritual transaction there. Anji. And what I what I really try to teach the students is that this is a very deeply and in, intensely spiritual activity that you're participating in. Hanji. And all we're doing is we're 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 kind of projecting the framework of that activity, but mm -hmm. you've got to experience it yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, when you do your kirtan, you know, the spiritual side of that music is what you're going to experience yourself. Anji, yeah. Yeah. We can teach with Shabd, but we can't teach the spiritual experience, mm, right? Bilkul, yeah. So yeah. to see bed ke kirtan karnaya, and then you know you want it to get to a point where you actually feel that spirit inside you. That's one thing, and the other thing I suppose is that you know music. The guru recognized that music is an extremely powerful medium. Hanji, yeah. He recognized this, that this is really, really powerful. I mean, we go to the gym, right? Mm. And better than any supplements we can have is the music that we're listening to in our ears. Mm. And that music will get an extra 20 reps every single time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you the trying music? to tell us you've been lifting heavy? Is that, I have, is that what you're <laughs> I haven't. But when, yeah. when you're jogging. Yeah. So it's, it's and, a negative and, and you, and you do a jog, yeah. you know, a five mile jog without music, you yeah. do a five mile jog with music, yeah. the five mile jog you do with the music, the music is carrying you. Very true. Yeah. So it, it has this effect and this impact on your body, on your mind, on your yeah. soul. It's a very, very powerful medium. Bilkul right? Hanji, yeah. yeah. It can make people cry, mm. it can make them laugh, it can instantly bring back memories, you know, and sentiments. Yeah. Yeah. Just listen to a track and suddenly all those sentiments come back, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's not a lot of other mediums that can do that to a human, right? Yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is it's a very powerful medium. And the guru 500 years ago recognized that. Hanji, yeah. Right? He, he didn't need to do any scientific research or anything. He saw straight yeah. away that this is really powerful, this is, yeah. right? And he... So powerful, he himself was a practitioner. He was a kirtani. Hanji, yeah. So yeah. this is the other thing now we need to understand is that, you know, we know Guru Gobind Singh was a warrior. Hanji. We know he was a philosopher. Mm -hmm. We know he was a poet. Yeah, we know he absolutely. was a leader. You know, and, and, you know yeah, you bullet got point endless list. list. Yeah, yeah. But the one thing we never seem to, the one tag we never seem to add was that he was a musician. Mm. And that's possibly the most important tag, right? Mm. This is an accomplished musician. Anji, yeah. This was someone who wrote the Dasam Granth mm. and, you know, inserted drugs like Sorat. Anji. You know, did he... So now we've got to think to ourselves, Guru Arjan Dev sitting there with Bhai Gurdas, right? He's compiling the Yad Granth, right? Mm. And he's sitting there and he said, Ahajra Shabdi Ahana, we're going to put that in the Tanasri collection. Anji. Now, did he just randomly think, oh, I just put it in Tanasri, or oh, where should we put this? By <laughs> yeah. Gurdas is saying, Ah, Shab Gitte, you know, Jatar Disaki no Balapana Gitte Rakhir, oh, put it in that rag. No, he didn't, mm. right? He knew the music and he said, No, that Shab goes over there. Anji, yeah. Can you see? And this is uh, something that we have to we have to try to understand that Jirakir Tanya Hanai was so powerful. The Guru recognized this centuries ago mm. and we still today have not quite comprehended the power of this music Hanji, yeah. right yeah. And the power of this medium and what i just want to say to newcomers is to try to embrace that power and the spirit you know of that music right try to look at it in a different way try to interpret it in the way that you know i'm trying to project here Hanji. Yeah. And when you do that, the whole Kirtan experience completely changes, right? You know, to a lot of, uh, you know, my dada guru, Pandit Ram Narayan, Hanji. for him, his net name is his music. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when he um, is 90 something years old now, mm. But for a lot of his life, you know, every morning he didn't sit and like up on it and then right. He didn't. That's not what he did. He mm. sat. Utte more murti hundi sigi, and he'd sit there and he'd play srangi to the murti, mm. and he'd say, "This is my net name." Hanji, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And for six, jare sek kirtan kar dene for you. That is also your net name. Mm. Think of it that way. You know, mm. try to live your life in 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 that regard. Yeah. So like, wake up on the villa. Get your tanti saj out. Yes, yeah. And sit in front of Shastar or of course yeah. if you've got Maharaj Prakash then that's it, isn't it? That's it. That's, that's yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. G for your time. And uh, I'm sure we'll catch up in the next one. So the next podcast episode we're gonna be talking about a deep dive into volume one, album one. 
and we'll uh, go through each of the shabads and anything that you feel like in your research and your understanding that we can pick out and and just talk about them we will do uh, so yeah thank you thank you yeah,